Welcome students. Today I'm going to explain the basic features of phototropins. Already uh, in my previous lecture, I mentioned the importance, structural details of phytochromes and cryptochromes. And today I want to discuss the basic architectural plan of phototropins, how they activate, and what are the basic responses of phototropin activation. Firstly, I must mention that this is a blue light sensing pigment. Here, actually I presenting uh, one of a very important paper by Christie et al. And here I select some of the important facets of the paper and discussing for the topic for SIN 5 undergraduate students of West Virginia State University. Now, as we all know, that light is one of the most important environmental cues controlling the plant for development in various ways. And it is achieved through a suit of photoreceptive proteins like phytochromes, cryptochromes, phototropins, etc. Some of the actions uh, of this specialized photomorphogenetic uh, attributes. They act together and in some cases they act solely. The photoactivation of these proteins stimulate a range of processes that ultimately optimize the photosynthetic efficiency of plants, including phototropism. So, this photosensory pigments increase the efficiency of plants. For instance, phototropin directs the movement of chloroplast, which represent the heart of the photosynthetic machinery, as their position within the cell can greatly affect the efficiency of energy production. Like uh, I want to show you, in the first condition of this image, where light-induced activation, or it's better to say phototropin-induced activation, this results into clumped aggregation of the chloroplast. It's better to say that the left condition showing the, it's a microscopic image, accumulation movement of chloroplast to the cell surface. When the leaves are irradiated from above with a low intensity of blue light. And whenever the light intensity increases, it shows uh, avoidance response. This particular shift or transformation from aggregated or clumped to the avoidance response and the chloroplast also changes their location from the surface to the periphery or the side walls because they try to save, save the plant from high light intensity. That is, they reduces the photodynamic damage. So, this is one of the aspects of phototropping. Then leaf positioning and expansion is also directed by phototropins. Our next image, leaf position. Here, depluti indicate wild type, where phototropin is completely activated or in a working condition. And this P1, P2 indicating 
the one of the mutants in Arabidopsis where phototropins are completely inactivated. So the nature and position of the leaf also changes depending on the activation and mutated or inactivated condition of the phototropins. Then the leaf expansion in wild type with activated phototropins, this is the nature of the leaf, and in mutated type, this is the nature of the leaf. Then I must mention that phototropins control the opening of the stomata also. These pores, they are mostly encountered in the leaf epidermis, which regulate the gaseous exchange. Stomatal opening is very crucial for the energy production mechanism, as it allows carbon dioxide uptake for the photosynthetic process. Collectively, all these responses serve to enhance the photosynthetic efficiency of plants and maximize their growth potential. Again, phototropin also help in the heliotropism by the species are able to track the movement of the sun by this process. This photomovement response is also likely mediated by phototropins. Now, in the model organism, that is Arabidopsis, already we identified two types of phototropins, FOT1 and FOT2. The mutants of the Arabidopsis lacking both phototropins, that is FOT1 and FOT2, lose their phototropic responses. So, both these two components or types of phototropins are very crucial for their effective response. Moreover, genetic and physiological analysis of the mutants lacking FOT1, FOT2 or both photoreceptors demonstrate that they overlap in function to control a number of different photoresponses. That is, both phototropins must be in an active state to establish that particular phenomenon. But it has also been found that the FOT1 and FOT2 also provide some specific role of their own. In the next part, I will to show you their specific response. Like FOT2, which induces chloroplast avoidance, already I mentioned, avoidance movement to the cell sidewalls from the upper surface to the cell sidewalls in bright light to increase mutual shedding and prevent photo damage of the photosynthetic machinery under excess light by FOT2 and obviously FOT1 also some specific function like rapid but transient growth inhibition response of young seedlings upon their emergence from the seed to ensure their stable and viable development. Now, we consider the structure of phototropins. This is the basic structure of phototropins discussed from Arabidopsis. The structure of the plant phototropin can be separated into two parts or two domains. One is in terminal 
photosensory region and another one is C-terminal output region. The C-terminal output region have a serin-thidionin kinase motif and the, this N-terminal photosensory region have to love domains. These are very crucial for the activation and further expression of the phototropins. The N-terminal region comprises two love domains, already I mentioned, each of which bind the vitamin B-derived cofactor, FMN, or flavin mononucleotide. Okay, so these are the FMN. FMN. As a blue light absorbing chromophore, love domains exhibit protein sequence homology to motifs found in various range of eukaryotic and prokaryotic proteins involved in sensing light oxygen and voltage. That's why we call them love. Protein crystallography has shown that the love domain consists primarily of five antiparallel beta sheets and two alpha helix. So five antiparallel beta sheets and two alpha helix which binding FMN tightly inside an enclosed structure. Next, how this phototrophin activated by light? There are so many uh, views. According to one view, which is mostly accepted one, that the love two play the most important mechanism. Love 2 functions as a repressure of the C-terminal kinase domain in the dark. So, Love 2 function as a repressure of the C-terminal kinase domain in the dark. Also, we ha already we have an idea about C-terminal kinase domain, which have a serin thidionin region. And that this mode of repression is alleviated upon photo excitation. So we can overcome this uh, repression by photo excitation, resulting in receptor autophosphorylation throughout the protein. The photo excitation of the love 2 leads to the displacement of the alpha helix from the surface of the domain. Unfolding of this alpha helix, designated as J alpha, results in the activation of the C terminal kinase domain. So, by the process of photo excitation, the C terminal domain now in an activated mode. Protein rearrangements within the central, that is the beta sheet scaffold, have been reported to play a role in propagating the photochemical signal generated within the LOV2 domain to bring about protein changes in the surface, which are very necessary for the activation of the C-terminal kinase domain and autophosphorylation of the specific serine thidionine residues. Light activated phototropin can return to its non phosphorylated state upon incubation in darkness. This recovery process involves dephosphorylation of the receptors by um, unidentified protein phosphatase. So, this diagram explains the mechanism. This is the LOV1 and LOV2. As I already mentioned, that LOV2 is the most important vital regulatory portion which activate, which completely uh, usually suppress the activity of the C terminal region. And upon blue light exposure or photo activation, the activity of the love to domain completely 
destroys and by the process of phosphorylation the C-terminal region activates and this results into the activation of the phototropin. So here it mentioned that phototropin activation by the blue light includes in the dirt phototropin is unphosphorylated and is inactive. So this is the inactive phototropin. The absorption of the light invokes a photochemical reaction within the love domains. Photo excitation of the main light sensor, love 2, causes a disordering of the JA helix and the activation of the C-terminal kinase domain, which consequently leads to autophosphorylation of the photoreceptor. The relative position of the photophosphorylation sites are indicated. So, photophosphorylated phosphate group atom. In this way, the photophosphorylation autophosphorylation evens, changes, and subsequently activates the phototropin. These are the sources from which I prepared this material, and you can follow the whole research article from this link also. So, go through the basic structure of phototropin, then its regulatory mechanism and the activities or responses of the phototropin. Thank you.